Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. deal with them, or fail to deal with them. There is hardly a more powerful emotion the human psyche can support than love. When love is lost, there is no greater tragedy it is called upon to endure. Yet no one is immune from either experience. We all love, we all lose. Most of us not once, but many times. It is a wonder that we survive, yet somehow we do. Look, there. Straight out over the water. You see them? One just dipped down to catch a fish. What kind of birds are they? See what long wings they have. Those are Manx shearwaters, the first I've ever seen migrating. Now, those must be the grown birds, the adult ones. Where are the little ones? The babies and the children? Oh, they've been left behind. All by themselves? Alone? By themselves? Don't worry. They'll catch up. How can they? With nobody to show them. They won't know how. Our mystery drama, Sand Castles, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Norman Rose and Jada Rowland. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You were speaking of love and loss, the joy that exists, and the pain that follows. For when we love, we invest a portion of ourselves in the one we love. And when that loved one is lost to us, a bit of ourselves is torn away, set adrift, as it were, with no home, nothing to which it can attach itself. We are then bereft and helpless, calling, come back, come back. Jeremy Denham. Two years ago, I was forcibly retired because of age from my teaching job. Last year, my wife died. My children live at a distance with families of their own. What to do with myself? It was with relief that I turned to my enthusiasm of many years bird watching, with particular interest in shore and water birds and their fascinating migrations. Now, there was a bird sanctuary on an island not too far away, and I had the name of its caretaker, Ralph Poole. I wrote to him, and as soon as I arrived on the island, I strolled down the beach to seek him out. Before I could reach him, I saw a girl. Good afternoon. Lovely day. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, that was a silly question, wasn't it? Uh, you're building a sandcastle. Anybody can see that. Do you mind if I sit down for a minute and watch you? If you want to. I don't mind. <laughs> You're making the moat now, aren't you? Every good sandcastle has to have a moat. The sea comes in later and fills it up. I remember how it was. Yes, I built a lot of sandcastles when I was young. Oh, much younger than you. It was being on the beach so much when I was little that got me interested in birds. That's my avocation, my hobby. Especially shore and water birds... Well, I'm here now because this is about the time when most of them start their migration to the south for the winter. Oh? It's about time for the lesser yellow legs to start for Martinique. Is it? 1,930 miles. And they do it in six days. That's 322 miles a day. Not bad. I guess not. Look. Look. They're straight out over the water. One just dipped down to catch a fish. I think they're shearwaters. They look like seagulls. No, 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 no. You see what long wings they have. I believe those are Manx shearwaters, the first I've ever seen migrating. Those must be the grown birds, the adult ones. Where are the little ones? Well, they've been left behind. All by themselves? Alone by themselves? 
Don't worry. They'll find their way. How can they? With nobody to show them. Now, now, don't be upset. It's not unusual among birds. The shearwaters hatch their chicks in dark burrows up north and spend all their time fattening them up. <laughs> the chicks get so chubby that when it comes time to migrate, they can't get out of their burrows. And their parents simply go off and leave them. What happens to them? Um, they go on a diet. You mean that? Mm, till they slim down and their tail feathers grow. And then they squeeze themselves out of the burrow and they head out to sea. How do they know where to go? Uh, well, I, I wish I could tell you, but I can't. I don't know. Nobody does. But these youngsters will locate the ocean and find food and fly over the sea for hundreds and hundreds of miles, all on their own, with no one and nothing to guide them but their own instinct. <laughs> had been the only display of emotion the girl had shown. And when it had subsided, she sat staring out to sea without speaking. After a little, I got up and left her to make my way to my original destination, the small cottage belonging to Ralph Poole. Come in, Mr. Denham. Come in. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Poole. Now, please, call me Ralph. <coughs> Sit down, and I'll get you a beer. Yeah, that would be very nice. I just finished your article on banded birds. Enjoyed it. <laughs> well, of course, there's nothing definitive about it. All the same, every little bit of information helps. Here's your beer. Oh, thank you. So, you're here to watch the migrations, you said in your letter. Yes, and I'd like your permission to wander over your sanctuary. Consider it done. I'm just here to keep the hunters out. Any bird watcher is welcome. Oh, that's very kind of you. You're a little early for the barn swallows. I may still be here in September when they take off. <laughs> no. I haven't the least idea where they go. South America. Uh, Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, all over. I didn't know. Oh, then you're not a dedicated bird watcher, I take it. I'm a dedicated poet. Wow, well, you don't say. No, not the simplest way to make a living. <laughs> I should think not. <laughs> Somebody wangled this job for me. No rent, a garden of sorts out back, fish from the ocean. I make up pretty well. Every now and then, I sell a bit of verse to some obscure publication. It's a good life. Hmm. Not lonely? If it is, I don't mind it. There aren't tourists. Not that I spend much time with them. Then there are the birds. So you, you don't uh, suffer from loneliness? Well, now and then, I have a visitor like yourself. And then there's the girl. She's here every day. A girl with red hair... Eyes the color of pale jade. Yeah, that's Maureen. Maureen Hart, her name is. Yeah, I saw her on the beach. Talked to her for a couple of minutes. This is about the time of day she arrives. Every day? Every day. <gasps> Doesn't sound as though she came to see you. She comes to build a sandcastle. Every day? Every day. Huh. Well, that's what she was doing when I stopped to speak to her. A very elaborate sandcastle with uh, turrets and uh, battlements. Well, she always builds the same one, in the same place. Huh. Who is she? I don't know too much about her. She's not very communicative. Yes, I noticed. I tried to talk to her about birds, my favorite subject, and the only time I got a definite reaction from her was when I told her about the Manx shearwaters. I, I thought I saw a flock flying over. She's interested in shearwaters? I didn't know she was interested in any of the birds. It was when I told her that the adult shearwaters often start their migration ahead of their offspring, leaving them behind in the Canadian burrows where they were born. She's interested in that? No, oh, she got sort of uh, agitated, wanted to know how the young birds would know where to go. I'd like to know that myself. Oh, well, so would I. You mean nobody knows? Well, instinct is the best answer anybody's come up with. But, uh, listen, tell me more about this girl who builds sandcastles. Yeah, her mother works in town, behind the counter at a pizza parlor. I think Maureen helps out now and then. Actually, beyond that, I don't know very much. A pizza parlor, you said, where the mother works. It's the only one in town. Her name is Eleanor Hart. Let me know what you find out, if anything. Oh, I will. I certainly will. Because I like the girl. I do. I really like her. I don't quite know what I had in mind when I went looking for the mother of the young girl on the beach. 
Perhaps I was simply feeling lonely and out of touch with my life, and this was a way of taking my mind off my own desolation. Something to pass the time. Whatever my motivation, I quickly located the pizza parlor, the only one in town, with only one woman behind the counter. Yep, what'll it be? Uh, are you Mrs. Eleanor Hart by any chance? That's me. Yes, well, my name is uh, Jeremy Denham. I'm just here for the summer. Oh, yeah, one of those. Hmm. You, uh, you don't seem to be terribly busy at the moment. I wonder if I might talk to you. What about? Uh, about your daughter. What about my daughter? Maureen, I believe her name is. Well, what about her? Well, I ran across her this afternoon, and we talked a little. About what? Well, I did most of the talking, I'm afraid. About, uh, birds. Migrating birds. Maureen don't know nothing about birds. No, no, no. That is my interest. I'm afraid that I bore lots of people with it. What were you trying to do? Pick her up? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm a bit past the age for that. Yeah, darn right. Not that I'd put it past her. I beg your pardon? Anything in pants. You know. No, I, I don't. I really don't. Every well, day she runs out of here, middle of the afternoon, leaves me to run the place by myself. You think that she... She w- goes off to meet some man. What else? Oh, I don't. I don't think that's true. That's not true at all. How would you know? You just met her. Oh, that's so. Well, no I... new thing with her. She's been doing it for years. How many years? Oh, uh, since she was a kid. Used to run off right after school. Didn't show up till dinner time. Wouldn't tell me where she'd been or doing what or who with... But I knew. And I know now. It's some boy she's meeting on the sly. Uh, With her, it's always a boy. Always has been. Uh, Mrs. Hart, it is not a boy. Well, by now, it's a grown man. The only man she meets is the caretaker at the bird sanctuary. There. You see? I knew it was a man. Who is he? But his name is Ralph Poole, and they they hardly know each other. Uh, That's what you think. That is what I know. He, He told me. And you believe him? Yes. I've no reason not to. Well, he's spoken to her a few times, found out her name, your name. He's the one that told me where to find you. But that's all that has happened between them. He likes her, he says, but there is no, you know, romantic involvement. I'm sure of that. He wouldn't have told you if there was any more than she'd have told me. (laughs) You don't know much about the world, mister. I think I do. No, no, he would not lie to me. Why wouldn't he? Well, because he's not that kind of a man. Uh, look, I don't think we've got any more to talk about. Thanks for taking an interest in Maureen. She doesn't go there to meet Ralph Poole or any other man. Please believe me. No? Then what does she go there for? Well, she, to build a sandcastle. To what? To build a sandcastle. Why would she do that? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. It's crazy. That's what she was doing when her brother drowned. But that was ten years ago. I couldn't find my voice to respond to what the woman said. That's what she was doing when her brother drowned. But that was ten years ago. Had the girl been building sandcastles by the sea for ten years? And if she had, why had she been doing it? I venture to say that there are literally no mundane lives. Set out to investigate the details of any one of them, and sooner or later you will come upon something that marks it unusual, dramatic, or tragic. Or perhaps all three. No life is ordinary or uneventful. If it seems so, it is because it is unexamined. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Loss is a separation. In the mysterious realm of psychiatry, there is something called a separation neurosis, where the psyche cannot bear up under the strain of separation from someone loved, valued, or simply relied upon. It fills up with terror, despair, and impotency. Perhaps, I do not really know. It has its origin in infancy when the helpless baby is left alone by the mother with no certainty that she will ever return. 
Or perhaps it goes back as far as the original separation from her body. Who was this character I thought who'd come barging into my place of work asking about my daughter, dredging up something I'd finally managed to live with? The death of my little son. I felt like throwing him out, telling him never to show his face again, but for some reason I'll never understand, I didn't. Maybe because he seemed so... so concerned. Not just interested, but really concerned. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Hart. I had no idea. Oh, that, that's all right. It was a long time ago. Is it very painful for you to talk about it? But if it is... It's not painful, exactly. Maybe if I talked about it more when it happened. You mean you didn't? You didn't talk about it? It was such a shock. Oh, yes, of course it was. He was only two years old, you know. Two years and two months. That's terribly sad. Yes, it was sad. He'd be 12 years old if he hadn't drowned. And maybe my husband... Maybe he... Yes. When Kenny drowned, he just took off. Hasn't been heard from since. Oh, I am sorry. I'll tell you the truth as long as I'm at it. He and I hadn't been getting along for quite a while. Actually, I had Kenny because I thought a new baby would fix things up between us. Hmm. He did stay with you for two years. Two years and two months. He liked having a son, but he never liked being married to me. So you had no one to share your grief with? No. And neither did Maureen? I suppose. Very hard to mourn alone. Well, you just put it out of your mind completely. Forget it ever happened. Have you been able to do that? Well, yes. There are times when I think about it, think back to what was or what might have been, but then I get real busy doing something and I'm all right. And life must go on, you know? Yes, I do know. My wife died last year and my life is going on. Mm. Did you love her? Most of the time I did. Other times she irritated me and got on my nerves. But the odd thing is when she passed away... I missed the times she got on my nerves almost as much as, you know, the other times. Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Now, if uh, if it isn't too difficult for you, would you tell me about the sand castle? Uh, after my husband cut out, I had to go to work. He never sent any money. What am I saying? He never even sent a postcard. And here I am in this dinky town with a 13-year-old daughter. That's not easy. I can see how it wouldn't be. A yeah, pretty daughter. Red hair, green eyes, neat figure. Oh, you've seen her. Oh, yes, she's very pretty. Yeah, always was. The boys at school were after her all the time. And not that you could blame them. No, certainly not. I used to bring Kenny to work with me. Then after school, Maureen would stop by here and pick him up. Take him to the beach. Anyway, that's where she said she took him. Oh, probably was. Maybe. I know I didn't see either one of them till that time for dinner. Then one day, she showed up for dinner without Kenny. I was half out of my mind. Of course you were. So naturally, the first thing I said was, where's Kenny? But that girl just gave me this blank look like she'd suddenly gone stupid or something. I kept after her and after her. She just kept shaking her head, not talking. She was, I don't know, like dumb or something. I think she must have been in shock. Well, that could have been it, I guess. Huh. Well, how did you find out that what had happened to Kenny? The police showed up. They said some tourists had found the body and reported it. That poor little boy had drowned in two feet of water. Got knocked down by a wave, I guess, and drowned in two feet of water. Well, 
I had the devil's own time getting Maureen to tell me how it had happened. She didn't even know. Not really. She kept telling me how she'd been building this sand castle, and it was all finished except for the flag on top. Seems she always put a flag on top, a piece of seaweed or something. She'd gone off to look for it. When she came back, Kenny wasn't there. I don't know if it even entered her head that he might have drowned. As far as she was concerned, he had just disappeared. Oh, I am sorry for him, for her, for you. Yeah. I'll tell you something. I have never really believed that story about going off to look for a flag. No, why not? It's my private opinion. She went off to meet some boy. Oh, I don't... Oh, how long does it take to find a piece of seaweed? There's seaweed all over the beach. Well, maybe she wanted something different on that particular day. Maybe. And maybe not. Anyway, Maureen... She just went on like nothing had happened. Oh, surely not. Oh, yes. Yes, she did. Oh, maybe she got a little quieter for a while, but that's all. Didn't you talk to her about Kenny? What was there to say? Kenny was dead. I mean, that's all. There wasn't anything to say. Yeah. Well, thank you for telling me, but it doesn't explain, does it? Why Marine keeps going back, building the same sandcastle over and over again. We still don't know why she does that. I hadn't told that story in ten years. And here I was going over the whole thing with a man I'd never seen before. A nice, older man, but nobody who could possibly understand what I went through when I lost Kenny. If to believe him when he said Maureen went to the beach every day and built a sand castle. So when I quit work, I went to find out if it was true. And there she was. Hello, Mother. Just like the man said. What man? Oh, uh, old guy came into the pizza parlor and says, You come here every day. Been doing it for a long time. Building a sand castle. New one every day. How long you been doing that without telling me? Long time. What else you been doing? What? Who is Ralph Poole? He's the caretaker here. How old is he? I don't know. Mary? I don't know. You ever think to ask him? Why should I? Well, didn't the subject ever come up? Why should it? Well, what do you talk about? You and this Mr. Poole. Today we talked about the tides. The tides? What did Mr. Ralph Poole have to say about the tides? It's the way the ocean rises and falls. Twice a day. It has something to do with the way the, the sun and the moon attract each other. I see. And this Mr. Poole, do you and him attract each other? Well, he, he says the reason my sandcastles get washed away is because of the flood tide. Well, you know that, don't you? Yes, I know it. Then why, for heaven's sakes, do you keep coming back and making another one? I don't know why I do that. I, I think maybe it's because I don't really believe it. Well, why wouldn't you believe it if you know it's so? Listen, Mother, Mr. Poole's going to show me. Show you what? How the tide comes in and washes away the sand castle. And just when does he propose to do that? Uh, the night of the first full moon. You are going to meet this man on this beach at night? Yeah. I oh, am. no. No, no. No, you're not. Yes, I am, Mother. You and a strange man alone on the beach with a full moon? There's only one way that'll happen. And that's over my dead body. Yes? 
You Ralph Poole? Yes, I am. I'd like to come in, please. I'm Eleanor Hart. Oh, Maureen's mother. Please, please come in. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mrs. Hart. You are? Maureen's told you about me? Well, not much, but some. Has she told you I'm very strict with her? No, she never said that. She, well, she really never said much of anything, except where you worked, things like that. Well, she's told me about you. Really? Yes, really. And she told me what you got planned for her. Her and you. <laughs> Honestly, Mrs. Hart, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, the beach, the tide, full moon. You know all right. No, I... Oh, that. Now, if you think I'm going to let my daughter out of the house to meet you here late at night... No, 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 no. Let, let me explain, please. It's not anything like what you think. It's, it, it's just an idea I have. Yes, I know all about the ideas men have about young girls. Now, listen to me, please. Someone I know, a friend of mine, he's here for the summer. He's a bird watcher, as I am in an amateur sort of way. He's here to watch the migration of birds. An old gentleman? Well, yes, over 60, I'd say. I've met him. He came to see me. That's how I know where Maureen goes every day. He told me. Yeah. Well, I learned from him that some birds migrate by night, which astonished me. Well, naturally, I said, how does anybody know uh, that birds migrate by night? Who's seen them? Well, who did? Mrs. Hart, there's something called moon watching. And what's that? On the night when there's a full moon, if you set up a telescope, you have a good chance of seeing migrating birds fly across the moon. What do you think of that? You mean it? Mr. Denham told me. He's seen them. Now, I don't have a telescope, but I have some very strong binoculars. And the next full moon, I mean to go out on the beach and see if I can spot some migrating birds. What's all this got to do with Maureen? She don't take any interest in birds that I know of. Well, I know she doesn't. I don't even think she was listening when I told her about moon watching. But then I told her about the tides and how the flood tide washes away her sandcastles every night. And she was interested in that. Yeah, she told me. So I thought I'll combine the two things. Maybe she'll be interested in the moon watching. Maybe she won't but she'll be there when the tide comes in and washes away her beautiful sandcastle. Then maybe she won't have to build another one. Uh, that moon watching. I'd kind of like to see that myself. He wasn't such a bad guy. Lots nicer than I thought he'd be. Nice looking, too, about... 30, 35, something like that. And educated. You could tell that right away. I knew I was taking a chance, but I told Maureen it was okay. She could go meet him on the night of the next full moon. I suppose we could say that our young heroine is acting under a compulsion. That is, a feeling of being irresistibly driven toward the performance of some action which is irrational. One which she knows and concedes to be irrational. And there lies the mystery of the compulsion. Will demonstrating that the tide washes away every sandcastle she builds deter Maureen Hart from building yet another one? And another? And another? And another? I'll continue with Act 3 shortly. There are three people puzzled by Marine Hart's daily continuing construction of a sandcastle on the beach. Jeremy Denham, an elderly retired professor and an avid bird watcher. Ralph Poole, caretaker of the bird sanctuary. And Eleanor Hart, Marine's mother. While each would like to unravel the secret of the girl's obsession, it is the history of compulsion that no outsider can influence or alter what the compulsive person does not comprehend but simply obeys. Peculiar woman, Mrs. Hart. I suppose lots of mothers have this fixed idea that every man alive is trying to seduce their daughters. 
I don't know why this should be, but I don't think it's right. Not that I wasn't attracted to Maureen. I was. But not just because she was pretty. No. Because there was something helpless about her. Something that made me want to protect her and take care of her. Well, anyway, the time of the full moon came around. Maureen and I made a date to meet on the beach. Hi there. Hi. Hi, Mr. Poole. Well, hello, Mrs. Hart. I thought I'd come along that moon watching business. I'd like to see that. I'm very glad you uh, did that. You know how to use binoculars? I got no idea. Well, I'll show you as soon as I get them adjusted. Uh, Maureen, Mr. Poole's going to show us how to look through the binoculars. Oh, she won't budge from that sand castle. Mm, well, the tide has started coming in. She'll have to move pretty soon. There. Try that. Okay. Oh, I, I can see the moon all right. And no birds, though. Well, maybe we won't see any. You have to be lucky. Wait. Uh, listen. Oh, I hear it. Well, if we're lucky, some of them will fly right across the moon. Oh, I hope so. I do hope so. There they are. There they are. Oh, don't let me look. I think they're Wilson's petrol. Oh, let me look, please. Here. Where's Maureen? Oh. Oh. I see them. I see them. Maureen? I'm here. <sighs> you missed the great sight. The tide washed away my sandcastle. Well, you knew it would do that. Yes, I know. Maureen, where were you? You missed the whole thing. First we heard them, then we saw them flying across the moon. Where is he? Mr. Poole even knows what kind of birds they were, and you missed the whole thing. Where is he? Tell me where he is. Maureen kept beating at her mother with her fists. Eleanor Hart was completely bewildered. And so, I must admit, was I. We stood by helpless as Maureen sobbed and shrieked at her mother. At last, she subsided, more, I think, from exhaustion than from anything else. Leaning on her mother, she let herself be taken home. A few days later, Mr. Denham stopped by the house, and I tried to tell him about it. It uh, didn't quite turn out the way you'd hoped, did it? I thought just the sight of the sea washing away her beautiful sandcastle would, well, would put an end to it. Children don't know about death. How can they? They just feel shock and horror that someone had been taken away from them. But she just kept pummeling her mother and screaming, Where is he? Where is he? Tell me where he is. Children are very angry when someone they love disappears. Oh, Maureen isn't a child. She's over 20. She was a child when her brother drowned You'd think by this time she'd have taken it in. That her brother is dead. Children can't mourn, you know. I remember when my mother died. I was ten when that happened. I felt shocked, stunned, really, that she should have gone off and left me. Angry, too. But uh, I never grieved in the adult sense. I couldn't. I didn't know how. I do know that there's been a shadow over my life since she died. That shadow may have been my grief. But you seem just fine. Not like a man who's lived his life under a, a shadow. No. How did you manage that? I don't know that I have managed it. Not completely. I do know, though, that marrying the woman I did helped a lot. It hadn't turned out quite the way I'd hoped. My little plan had no effect on Maureen at all. She kept showing up day after day at the same time, building her sandcastle in the same place. I tried not going near her. I watched her from my house. And even when I made a tour of the island looking for hunters, I kept thinking about her and wondering and wanting to be with her. Hello, Maureen. Oh, hello, Mr. Poole. <laughs> Don't you think by this time you could call me by my first name? It's Ralph. I know. You mind if I sit down? I could help you with the castle. All right. I'm sorry you missed the moon watching the other night. 
Mother said it was very exciting. We should have a drawbridge across this moat, don't you think? I don't know how to build one out of sand. I'll think about it. Maybe figure out something. It's finished. Oh, no. Not yet. Yes, it is. It, it's finished. No. There has to be a flag flying from the topmost turret with the owner's crest on it. A banner. A pennant. No. Every good sandcastle has one. This one doesn't. But it's absolutely essential. Now, I'll go look for one. No. No, don't go. Why not? What's the matter? Don't go away. Don't, don't leave me. I wasn't going to go far. I don't want a flag. Why not? I never put a flag on top. Why not? Why don't you? I just don't, ever. But why don't you? There's got to be a reason. No, oh, there doesn't have to be one. Want me to tell you what I think the reason is? It was when you went away from the castle to find a flag that your brother drowned. Isn't that right? That is right, isn't it? I wasn't gone very long. I didn't go very far. I know that. But when I came back, you see, it gobbled him up. I understand. He was just gone. I didn't know for a long time that, that he... That he had drowned. That he was dead. That I'd never see him again. You still don't know it. Oh, yes. But I know it now. My mother told me. No, you don't know it. That's why you keep coming back here and building a sandcastle. You go through the whole thing over and over again. You do it all except the last thing. Putting a flag on top. I never do that. No, you never do that. Because then your brother would drown again, wouldn't he? You'd come back from looking for the flag, and the sea would have gobbled him up. As long as you don't do that, there's a chance that he'll be right here where you left him. This time, everything would turn out right. Isn't that so, Maureen? Isn't it? Such a nice little boy. If you can just undo everything. Live it all over again, except the last part. Leave out the last part, and then it'll be as though he had never drowned. Such a good little boy. You keep going back over that day, don't you? Keep going over and over it, trying to make it different. I loved him. Of course you did. I loved him a lot. Don't you think I know that? Even when I got cross with him, I still loved him. I know. I never thought anything would happen to him because I loved him. I know. Something did. Probably a big wave came along and knocked him down. And he drowned. He's dead. Yes. And I'll never see him again. That's right. It's like... It's like... Like what? Like I died. But you didn't die. You're right here. A little bit of me died. It did. It really did. Oh, I want him back. I want him to come back. I know, I know. Honestly, I do. Why doesn't he come back? Because he's dead, my dear. I can't stand it if he doesn't come back. I need him. I want him. I love him. Why doesn't he come back? Why doesn't he? Just one more time. Why doesn't he come back? Just one more time. We sat on the beach for at least an hour while the tears poured from her eyes and I held her in my arms. Ten years of tears were shed in that hour, I think. And I let them flow. I wouldn't have stopped them for the world. I was happy to hold her and let her cry. But he won't come back, really. No. Not ever. Not ever. I guess I know that now. 
night we spent moon watching, you and your mother and I, you sat here by the sand castle you'd built that day, and you wouldn't leave it. Now, after your mother and I had seen the petrels fly across the moon, we came back here, and your mother was a little bit annoyed with you. She kept saying you, you missed the whole thing. And you? You remember what you said? You kept beating at your mother, hitting her over and over. And do you remember what you kept saying? I think I said, where is he? That's right. Where is he? Tell me where he is. Now, did you think that she could find your brother for you? I don't know. I don't think so. I think you wanted her to tell you where your father had gone to, where he is, and how to get him back. Do you think maybe I'm right? Maybe. It could be you're right. We'll talk about it one of these days. Now, let's go up to my house and have a cold drink. And maybe talk a little bit about you and me. She's expecting a baby. For a time, we talked about setting out to find her father. But after a while, she seemed to lose interest in it. And now, with the baby coming, well, everything is quite different now. I think the long period of mourning is finally over. to grieve? I doubt it. The best we can do is help them voice the awful hurt, the endless longing. Hold them close while they yearn and cry. It doesn't seem like much, but it's all we can do. Heaven knows we would do more if we could, but we ourselves are filled with hurt and longing. Our cast includes Norman Rose, Chada Rowland, Terry King, and Gordon Gould. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoy this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other